It is time, once again, to lock your doors, shut your windows, strap yourself into your favorite comfy chair, and tune out and tune into The Naked Zombie. Yes, it's once a time to get your clothes off, run around in the nutty, and get naked with the zombie. That's right, you are listening to the best of Australian Paranormal Pop Culture Radio Show, The Naked Zombie, and you are joining us tonight for The Naked Debate. And joining me in the cardboard box I call a studio is Wadsy and Liam. Go, okay, gentlemen, how are you tonight? How are you, sir? Good, how are you? Good. Feeling frisky. Really? <laughs> Jeez, then, huh? you're not showing it. Wait till later. <laughs> anyway, before we kick off anything with the Naked Debate tonight, we have a couple of really cool announcements. You're off to Sydney. I'm off to Sydney. Yes, well, we know that. I'm off to Sydney this did weekend. Buy, did you buy a return ticket? Maybe. I, <laughs> no. hope, I hope not. <laughs> oh, <sorry>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can say that. Um, yes, uh, I'm off to Sydney this weekend, of course, everyone knows. So there's a lot happening. I'll be on Ghosts of Oz, spending time with the folks from the goo and also at a wonderful location for an investigation and running amok, basically, and annoying the locals. Very good. Yes, and no, no, no one's ever done it before. No, no, but I will be coming back. It's fresh territory down there. No one knows. You see. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's well, right. We have sent photos. Yeah, thanks. The police have been knocking already. Um, also, we have been invited to go to Horicon. 2013 in Melbourne. Yes, the zombie, the naked zombie is off to Horicon in January next year. Yes, where we will be taking part in activities and events and we'll be running around interviewing people and... Fun and games for the whole family. Something excellent. like that. Yes, it's, <laughs> it's going to be cool because we get to hang out with real celebrities. Not like us. <laughs> We're like the like the F grade of celebrity. <laughs> you put us that high. <laughs> we'll be We're up to F- D grade by the time. <laughs> yeah. 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 We'll be up to F plus. <laughs> <laughs> Just above a fail. Um, is that what it is. Yeah, so we'll be off to Horicon for January next year. And like I said, um, I'll be there with my fellow zombies and we'll be going to be having a great time and it, look, look, basically we're going we're going to interview people we're going to meet people meet the celebrities there interview them even interview people in the crowd and when we get back from melbourne we will put it all together as a show and put it up so people can listen to the events and the interviews we've done and stuff like that and it's just going to be a lot of fun life crap Live? No, it won't be live. It'll be podcasted well, crap. Podcasted crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. Live podcasted crap from real people. Real people. So we're going to have a ball with them, and because they've got the costumes and everything like that. So you will find the link coming up on that in the next couple of days. Young Andrew is going to do that up for us, and he'll on the events page, and he'll put that up. How oh, is young Andrew? Still having trouble with his mummy? Yes, he is. No, he's not. <laughs> Andrew's mother listens to the show. And she's his biggest supporter, so be nice. Okay. Sorry, Andrew. Yeah, we're all sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. So Andrew's been going like a mad muck. He's got shops now up on the website, as people see. So there's lots of shirts there. Uh, for people wish they had to, they feel so nice on my skin. I'm wearing one right now. You it are. just feels nice. You can put some pants on with it. Well, technically, it wouldn't be naked zombie if I did that, would it? Yeah, we might as well go the whole hog. Yeah, dressed or undressed. Yep. So we're doing the whole thing. Yep. Um, so that's yeah. So and what else was there? Something awesome. Okay. Oh. We, what? Sorry. Did you see your number one fan on the par- opening of the Paralympics? My number one fan. Stephen on the- Hawkins. Was he really? Yes. No. He was. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't get to see it because I Man, was like. He was praising you. Not. Yes, if, if anyone's listened to the previous podcast, we're talking back right back to the early days. We actually got a very interesting phone call from Mr. Hawkins. Yes, have you got uh, it? Um, that, that rang up one day when I happened to be out and he left a very interesting message. He did. <laughs> it did. It sounded exactly like him too. It did, yes. So if anyone wants to check back, you can hear the message from... I'm sure you've got it safe somewhere. We can put it on the end of the show. Yeah, we'll put it up in another... Go- I'll find it somewhere. <laughs> I'll put it back. That's probably like long gone by now uh, because of all the... Uh, but he doesn't look any worse for wear from knowing someone like you. Oh, yeah, he is. But he is... Oh, Stephen Hawkins, man, he is like a 
god to me. You're I'm, number one fan. Oh, well, I'm his number one fan. I don't, I don't oh, care okay. if he sends me nasty messages. <laughs> I still think he's pretty all right. And besides that, Liam has some very exciting news for the zombie listeners out there. And say would you what? Li- You'd say, what? <laughs> would you like, Liam, go um, for it. Yeah, um, coming up in the not-too-distant future, um, we'll actually be undertaking our first investigation. We've got a site, which is fantastic. Um, as far as the site goes, it's uh, amazing history that goes along with it. It's got a mm. connection with a lot of uh, absolute pioneers of Queensland. Uh, very, very important people. So it'll be fantastic to get out there and actually um, yeah, have a look through the site and see what we come up with. Mate, and that's it. Where and we're going at night time, are we? Well, that's we're going. Well, basically, what's happened? We're, we're going to go there during the day yeah. first to check it out, and then we're going to go there a bit for a second to do the proper show. Now, what we're doing is this is where it's interesting. We're actually going to be recording the investigation for the radio show. So, oh, so ev- not video recording it. For no, we're not video recording. <laughs> no, we're not going to put people through that painful exercise. <laughs> We're not a TV series, we are a radio show, so we're going to put it all on, we're going to record the whole investigation, we're going yep. to cut it up into the best bits, like where you're screaming like a little girl and running out of the door. Well, that'll be most of it. Which will be most of it, so if you hear any th- screamings or moans, it's not an EVP, it's just Wadzi changing his underpants, because um, he hasn't, you haven't really been on an investigation. No, I'm really excited. Yeah, we're really excited having you too. <laughs> <laughs> we call it... Bait. <laughs> Wadsy's our bait, um, and we're all going for that. But we, we're not going to spoil it by letting you where it is or where it is. But what I can say is this. It's one of this region's most... His, one of its most historic locations. That's right. It has a vast history and a lot of incidents that happened at this place. A lot of deaths, a lot of mystery behind it. But also, no one has ever, ever been there before being there before in this capacity to do an investigation. Isn't that right, Liam? That's right. So virgin so territory. Be virgin fantastic. territory for the zombie, and the zombie Oof. gets to go and do it. So, but once we've done it, we'll release all the details, and you actually hear about all the history and what we're doing and what's done after we've been there, so people can listen to it on the show coming up. Cool. Awesome. 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 Fantastic. fantastic. Yeah, well, I'm really excited about this. And we when have are we doing f- this? Hey? When are we doing this? Uh, probably in the, within the month, you yeah, reckon? Yeah, I'd say within the month. Yeah, within the month. Like, we do have the Bris- uh, Brisbane Zombie Walk uh, in October. Um, so we'll be in September sometime. We'll be doing this as well. And we have other... Of course, and also, if you would like the Naked Zombie team to come out to one of your um, events or something like that, you can contact via the website you listen to the show to now uh, because we love to get out there and meet people. Don't we? We do. We want to hear your stories. We want to hear your experiences. And we just want to blend in with the norms. <laughs> <laughs> the normal people out there not like we us. Need a, we need a reference point. Oh, there's the oh, phone. Who's this? Uh, false alarm. They don't want to speak to us. Tilly marketers. Got to love them. Yeah, actually, I've been getting a lot of those lately. Hey, so you right. know what it is? My, 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 my beautiful bride keeps going online. And, like, they have, like, certain things that come up type thing, you know, win this, win that, and pull your details in. And, and I'm not real happy about it because every time I'm about to sit down and hoe into dinner, they ring. No, I don't know what it is. It's because everyone else has gone to that do not call register. They've got to narrow the pool of people they can ring. Well, we're probably the only people on the planet that haven't registered yet. No, I yeah. love getting telemarketers because I just let it go through to the answer machine. And they sit on the answer machine going, hello, are you there? Hello, <laughs> hello, are you there? You're, 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 you're my favourite trickers. And this is nothing to do with paranormal debate, but they'll just, this is just interesting. The fact is that what I do is I get them on the phone. Right? I go, oh, gee, that sounds... Okay, hang on. Pretend. You ring. Ring, Hi, ring. Okay, have I got ring. a deal for you? <laughs> hello, Brad speaking. Hi, Brad. Is this Brad, the man of the house? Yes, it is. How may I be of assistance for you? Have I got a deal for you? Oh, that sounds really cool. Can you just hang on a second? I'll be right back. I've just got to grab something and write this down. Now, the phone will sit there for 20 minutes to a half an hour. And every now and then I pick it up and I listen to them. And sometimes, believe it or not, they're still sitting there breathing. And I put the phone back and down until I hear the beep. <laughs> yes, you know why? Because they're getting paid to sit there and do that. Yeah, so you're yeah, not. Yeah, no, so I just leave. I just let it go. I just walk around the house and do what I'm doing. And stuff. So think of the 47 other people you've just saved from a phone That's call. That's right. <laughs> I, I, I consider it a community service that I'm actually taking the time to do this for the people. You're taking the time to do nothing. Oh, leave me alone. <laughs> anyway, so and I was going way off track now, which is not uncommon for what we were talking about. Um, 
Phone calls. Phone calls, yes. And, yeah, that was it. That was it. Uh, that was it. That's all I had. And thank you. Good night. And thank you for joining us tonight on The Zombie. It's been an absolute <laughs> pleasure having you boys in. Uh, yeah, but see, lots of things happen. We've also got, like I said before, and if you would like us to come out to your events and stuff like that, we've also got plans for 2013, haven't we, Liam? We uh, do. Yeah, we do. It's secret squirrel stuff, so you're going to have to wait and see what happens. We haven't told you about it no, yet. You haven't told it? me about this yet, no. No, me, me and Liam. Liam didn't leave. What time did you leave leave the studio last time? Oh, what was it, midnight? No, maybe? try about 1.30 in the morning. It was late anyway. <laughs> me and Liam sitting around talking about 1.30 in the morning. We could have basically recorded and had like a whole month's worth of shows just then and then. We're getting right into it. Why didn't you? Because I just didn't feel like it. <laughs> Think how much download that would have taken. Um, uh, but, yeah, so that's cool. So we've got a lot of cool stuff happening. And so we better get back to it because I'm sure people we have gone past the 10 minutes dribbling on point now and I'm sure people want to hear some questions and some information. How does that sound? Sounds, Sounds good. good. Well, Kels, who is absolutely lovely and wonderful. Thank you, Kels. She always writes in to us and we can't thank her enough. So if you're a paranormal group out there in New Zealand... Get on, have a look at what she does. It's absolutely amazing. You'll find her on my Facebook fan. Oh, and thank you to everyone on the Facebook fan page for Naked Zombie Radio. Up over 5,000? 5, 5,360 as of tonight. Yep. It's going absolute gangbusters. That is, week. and I cannot thank all the people who have taken the time to like that. I mean, it means a lot to us because we just get a big kick out of seeing all these wonderful people really coming take on. Take the time. It takes two seconds to click on the button. Jeez, Christ, what's it? Okay, we've just lost... Uh, Five thousand two hundred. No, three. Don't worry, 5, Brad, I still love you. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not just that. It does. Thank you, everyone. Just ignore Wadzi and send all your hate mail to Wadzi. Yeah, um, yeah. What? Stop it. It and, crashed. Yeah, it crashed. <laughs> crashed and burned. And I got a cool new hat. See my cool new hat. Leather. Leather. It's so mm. so nice in my skin, like my naked zombie shirt that people can buy from the shop. And there'll be other stuff coming on there soon as well. Yeah, the so shops up and running, and they're available right yes, now. Yes, right now they're available right Limited now. Limited edition until you get more. Until I can actually afford to buy some more. <laughs> 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 the funny thing is, and this is a really sad part, um, I have to. I ordered one shirt right for Naked Zombie, yeah, you know, like the one-off which we're going to give to Whisper, um, give the guys there for their trip over to India that we're going to sign or they're going to sign and, and auction or do what they want with it. Mm, yep. So I thought, great, it's said, and this is what, this is, people love when I get on my soapbox. I'm going to get up on my soapbox. You know what annoys we'll take it off him next time. No, we'll you know it. what annoys me more than anything? Oh, uh, what get, now? When you get onto a website and it says everything, yeah, it's like Australian company and all the rest of yep. it, you know, you know, and you pay your money and you pay everything to get, get the shirt. I mean, the shirts that I got made, look, they're, they're Hans shirts, these ones, and they're beefy tees, and they're not cheap, to be honest with you, because I've got them here in Australia, I've got a print in Australia, and all the, the shirts aren't made in Australia, they're not that, but I've got everything done in Australia here. I went through this other company to get this other one done, and you know where it's coming from? China? The USA. Well, it's better than China. No, it's not. China's good. But I'm just saying it is. Yes. But it's an Australian company. Australian company printed lo- not far from here. Supposedly they have it here and it's going to take ages to get here. So I do apologise to the Whisper guys. Either I'm going to give you one of these shirts to, and you can sign it and with a white pen or something like that and you can auction it off. I'll work something out. If it doesn't show up tomorrow, I'll send, I'll send you guys something else. But that's it. I've got a couple of... Guess what also? I'm going to hold a couple of competitions. Now... I'm going to tell people all about the competition. Now? Right now. We can go to sleep then. Okay, you two can nod off. Competition one. There's two competitions for one shirt each. Yep. Okay. The first competition, listen carefully there, you naked zombies, you. Pen and paper. Get pen and paper. You ready? You're writing this down? No. All right. If you... (laughs) (laughs) If you want to win a naked zombie radio T-shirt... Brand spanking you that I have not worn or done horrible things to. Or in. Or in. Maybe, well, I won't actually put that in writing. But <laughs> oh in, God. what you got to do, right? I said it felt nice against my skin. What you got to do is you got to get your photo taken, right, in the most obscure place you can think about with a sign saying Naked Zombie Radio. That's the first competition. So basically what you do, you've got to hold up a piece of cardboard with Naked Zombie Radio. I don't care. You've got to get your photo taken in a place that is really odd, strange, 
Oh, like, I mean, look, cemetery shots, yeah, everyone can go to that. Oh, I want something a bit different. I stand in the middle of a major shopping so centre or something. Naked zombie, that should be in a clothes store. Yeah, no, but you know what? You just you think too much, Wadsy. Seriously, just just no, just roll with it, mate. Just obscure. Just, just could be that. opening a door that you can't close. Yes, and he's doing that. So, like, we're talking about in in, in a an environment that's different. You know what I mean? Now, we're not going to judge this. We're going to get a unbiased person to judge the best photo. Now, every single person who sends a photo with a sign saying "Naked Zombie Radio" will go on the website and look. We'll set up photos. Every photo, yep. Every photo, but there is one stipulation. I don't want to see any nudity. <laughs> I do not want to see any wedding tackle or boobies or anything like that. Unless, of course, no. No, 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 no. no nude photos. You like a sign holding your naughty bits. It's a separate email address for that. That's a separate email address for that. So, like, in, in, a, in a weird place, like, I don't know, anywhere that you guys deem to be unusual, you know, like, naked, there's a couple sign, naked zombie radio, on a car, send me your photo in, and it'll be judged by, and we're going to hold this competition for the next month. So we get enough people who listen yep. to the show and bring it in. You can email me that via brad at brad com, and every single photo will go in, right? Yep. Sounds good. So that's that's the first competition. So at the end of September, right? Yep. At the end of September, the winner will be drawn. I don't care where in the world you are, I will post that shirt out to you. So send your photos in with you, saying naked zombie, write a big smile or something, but in a place that's weird, in an obscure place that... With your surroundings, you know what I mean? And that would be sobering. Mm. So if you can do that, it's for the first competition. That's for the people who aren't artists. The second competition is for those artists out there. We want to see a caricature of one of us zombie knights, either myself, Wadsey, Liam or Andrew, as a zombie... Clothes. <laughs> I clothes. You have to if you can draw a really cool picture, scan it and email it to us. And that's the same thing again. We will send a shirt out size that suits you and they'll be judged by a non biased party that's got nothing to do with stuff, but they will pick the best caricature of whoever I don't care who it is myself, Wadzi, Liam or Just remember Aaron. we've all got six packs. And six abs and, and abs big muscles. And, big muscles. and I do not wear thick rim glasses or no. have Wear funny hats, you know. I'm big, your broad shoulders. Funny, your hats rather cool. And I'm actually stocky, not yeah. it's not long and lanky like a giraffe. Six foot two. <laughs> yeah, buff. You've got hair. <laughs> long flowing hair. Long. Fl- well, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> but that's the two competitions. So we're actually going to put that out on the website tonight, and that's for one shirt each, one competition each. Yep. Uh, yep. And they'll also be held. So send those pictures, send those photos in, and that will be absolutely fantastic. And that's a, I think that's a great way to. Uh, yeah, yeah. Are you guys yep. happy with that? Sounds good. Absolutely. So, so, so that does get so get some get a competition happening. Like I said, we're not going to judge it. So I don't want to hear any friggin' whinging if no. you didn't get picked because we're not judging it. It's going to be a anonymous person, and they're going to pick the winner for each one. Okay. So and that's what it's going to be. Sounds good. You happy with that? Excellent. Yep. Yeah. All good. You sure? Yeah, you did. You don't look real good. You're looking a bit unsure. Yeah, he does. Yeah. All right. First Sorry, I'm trying to find this, the uh, t-shirt yeah. online. Just make sure it's there. Yeah, it's there. Good. It's there. Good. Oh, good. All yeah. right. Okay. The hardest for people to find, and it's not. All right. Excellent. So what we're going to do is we're going to read out from Kells, who wrote in. Are those on the other side psychic to the same degree or more than those of us on this side? Can that explain some of the supposed mental afflictions? Of the living. That is a Ooh, deep, it's a very deep question. Deep so question. You, you mean those on the other side? Well, say putting if, questions if, into if the you were psych- of- like if you're psych in life, and I guess you died, yeah. right? And you, yeah, shook off the mortal coil, as it were. Would you actually still be psychic on the other side? And because you are that spirit, you're more and more psychic than we are, like psychics here and that. You know what I mean? So does it carry but over? Surely you just walk around and meet the other. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? I, I don't know. That is a really tough question. Yeah, Liam, you any thoughts on that? Um, I don't know. I guess, you know, generally, if you're on the other side or you've you've passed over, you don't have those physical, you know, constraints and limitations mm-hmm. that you do while you're alive. So, I'm not sure how. If you were psychic on the other side as a as a spirit, whether there'd be any major benefit to that. You know whether it would actually be usable mm-hmm. you know, in comparison to somebody who was living being able to use that that ability. Mm-hmm. How would you communicate with the living if you were dead? 
You'd have to go through another psychic, I suppose. You would. Unless you just turned up and... Well, yeah. I don't know, but uh, it's a tricky question. What? I mean, can you reread the, re the question again? Yeah, certainly, mate. Um, OK, Carl's right. <coughs> Get my good radio voice on. <laughs> Sorry. Actions, actions don't work on radios, yeah, right? I keep forgetting that. Okay, question. Are those on the other side psychic to the same degree or more than those of us on this side? Can that explain some of the supposed mental afflictions of the living? So basically, I guess what, what Kells are saying that you know how some people are very septic and uh, septic, psychic and open to different things and, and different experiences. Are they getting that information through people from the other side who are also like that, I guess? So I'm trying to work the question out as well. Yeah. I mean, it's a yeah. tough question. Yeah. I won't lie to you. It is really tough to answer. Because, A, firstly, I'm not quite dead yet. So it's a bit hard for me to sort of think. Oh, I think that's not a question that... I just think that's a question we might actually put out to our audience and any people that might yeah. know themselves. I mean, is she saying that people on this side are getting more information because people on the other side are, are passing it to them? Yeah, there could be. See, I don't know. So what I'm doing, I'm going or to post this question on the Naked Zombie uh, website. It's already on the, the fan site now, but we're going to post this question and we want to hear from people and their thoughts on this because this is a very interesting question. I really... And it's, it's really, it stumped me. It's a brilliant yeah, question. Yeah. It is absolutely a brilliant question. And we've gone all dead silent. We have, <laughs> yes. we have. That, that is a bit of a tough one, Kels. What we're going to do is we're going to actually get people's perception and see what they think about it. What do you reckon? Sounds good. Sounds oh, good. I think that that's, help us out. Yeah, I think that's absolutely and then we awesome. Can debate it more. Oh, uh, debate it more. I yeah. think it's good, yeah. Yep. All right, listen, this is something we've talked about before, and I guess, guess we know where we're going with this now. Um, a friend of the show, Nathan, uh, wrote in. He says, Hey, Brad, Nathan here from Lakes Investigation of the Paranormal Newcastle, mate. I am just wondering if you are seeing all the shit that is going down with a lot of paranormal groups lately. People creating false profiles on Facebook to attack both groups and individuals by bagging out their families, etc. Don't know if you just want to say it out or make it a substance of one of your podcasts. I know a lot of people have great respect for you. Thank you. Look, I appreciate it. I'm not reading out for that reason. Uh, including myself and just maybe you could do some good. We'll leave it in your... We'll leave it with you, mate. Um, yeah. I mean, we, we've discussed this before and it's... And I don't know why it's getting worse. Yeah. I seriously don't know why... And it seems to be, you know, almost on a weekly, a weekly basis. I, I am Every seeing week is getting worse and worse between groups. So it is. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of it because, look, I, I'm under the impression that, you know, I, I think everyone's cool. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, you know, the, the groups, everything like that. You know, they're all put in their bit. Uh, they're all doing their thing and type thing. What I can't work out is, is again into that stage now where. See, they don't realise that people who do up false IDs or false, you know, false information, even on Twitter, it's like in this. You just watched um, TV the other night about that that lady, that fashion oh, lady, like Charlotte Dawson, Dawson Charlotte yeah. Dawson thing, right? She wrote, and this is this is pretty sad. She wrote um, something about this this person wrote to her and said, um, um, "I wish you go and hang yourself," yeah, you know, type thing. And there's yep. one of oh, her, this is the uh, schoolgirl that wrote, put that. YouTube on no no no, not no, that no. One. no no this is one yeah, so Charlotte Dawson is quite quite a big celebrity here in Australia if you don't know who she is just okay. Google her. she I mean she does a good job what she does yeah, sorry but she, what she does was so this woman wrote said I wish you go and hang yourself anyway one of Charlotte Dawson's fans read how could you say such a thing I lost my partner a very short time ago who hanged himself through su mm. you know, like suicide yep. so Charlotte Dawson got so angry with this she actually tracked down the person who did it. Now, this person who did it worked at a university, a mature lady who... She actually rang her. See, people don't realise that if you're going to keep doing this, you'll get tracked down. That's right. Yeah. Technology is such a way they can track down... Your IP address... Exactly. ...comes up on your 
thing out. Where do you think the information... It doesn't matter if you give a false reference, name, detail. It doesn't matter. They'll pinpoint the computer. They'll pinpoint exactly where... No, they tracked her down. And now this lady who did this has been suspended with pay, mind you, until <laughs> further investigation. Yeah. So the people out there who think it's funny to rip people apart and stuff like that are called Muppets. You've got to realise, guys, you'll get tracked down. But what if you've actually done something that's actually pushed someone over the edge? Yep. You, they don't that, think. No. If, if you're going to go and attack somebody online, you know here are my eyes because you're hiding behind a computer screen. Exactly. Simply that. Yep. But what if you found out that your post or whatever you've done has called that person to go over the edge and done something to themselves? And not only does that affect them, it affects their family and their friends around them. And you'll have to wear that on your friggin' conscience. Yeah, right, start I mean, with that. Should it be... If it's found out, should it be um, attempted murder or assistance to murder or something like that? Is it getting that serious? I, I reckon it will. Yeah. I reckon if you it's manslaughter. Yeah. If you've pushed, well, if you've bullied someone that much, that they've caused them to not handle life anymore. Yeah, it's manslaughter. Well, there's uh, been that many, you know, that many cases over the last twelve or eighteen months as well. Where, you know, young kids have been bullied on Facebook and, and, and on Twitter, and, and they've and they have committed suicide. And they've committed suicide because they can't handle it. I mean, and this is what people don't realize. Yeah, it's all fun and games, and you're a freaking big man or woman, whatever you're doing that. You think it's, oh, great, it's a laugh. But think about the consequences at the end of the day yeah. and how it would affect that person and what you've done to them. Yeah. I am so pissed off at the moment regarding this sort of behaviour from people who should know better. Like, people can say what they want about me. I couldn't give a rat's ass. I really don't care. I've been attacked that many times over the years for what I do. And seriously, I don't care less at no. all. I couldn't give... I don't lose sleep over it. I don't but give a rat's. There's a, there's a way to attack people and then there's, there's putting down. Yeah, I mean, it? if someone criticises the way I do the show, that's fine. I, I, yeah. I, that's fine. That's their preference. That's not personal, I, I, that, That's not yeah. personal. No. But they mention anyone close to me. That's when I get really stroppy. Yeah. I mean, that's when the the gloves come off and I'll go bare knuckle, you know, yeah. type thing. And I think that's what's most concerning in Nathan's post is that, you know, these people who are trolling other people's websites are actually getting to the point where they're attacking family members and... But using you know, false names and man up, grow some friggin' balls. If you're going to do it, pick up the friggin' phone and do it or actually make... Go on, I was going to say write a letter, but they probably can't write. No. Well, they can't half the time. They can't even freaking spell. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but this is what gets me really, really upset. I thought by now, groups amongst groups would realise that this has got to stop. This is absolute bullshit. And mm. I'm sorry I'm getting a bit colourful with the language, but I, I don't care. I say what I want to say when I want to say it, and I say it how I feel yeah. fit. Well, I was supposed to be working for the common cause. That's right. And, you know, just because one person's on, on your turf, so to speak, um, what's the point of denigrating them and bringing them down. But we're flogging a dead horse. This is the thing. This is going exactly. over and yes. over gonna, and over and again. You're not going to stop it. No. I mean, but I think these people who do do it, think about it first. Think about what your one word could set someone off the edge. Yep. Mm. It could bring that person down to an absolute lowest of low and they will take their own life. And you will hear about it, and you will be tracked down, and the police will find you because they will track you down. And this is how it works in today's society yeah. with the technology. Yep. You will be found out, you will be prosecuted for manslaughter, you will go and spend time in the jail. And trust me, half these people who do this wouldn't last 10 seconds in the clink. Oh, yep. no, of course not. No, they would become fresh meat and fodder for the inmates who have been exactly. there for a long time. Yeah. You know? They're not going to pussyfoot around. No. Yeah. You know? I'm sorry, I, I get really angry that people are still abusing people in that sense. Yeah, you know, I, I can take crap left, right and centre. It doesn't even... I, like I said, I can handle it. I don't lose yeah. sleep about it. I don't get worried about it, yada, yada, yada. If someone wants to have a dig at me personally, fine. I couldn't care less. Knock your socks off, you know? <laughs> So it to me face but and But half, half these people have never met you. No. Wouldn't know what you're like in real life and they've only seen you on the, the shows. Yeah, oh, yeah, whatever. But that's fine. Yeah. But if you want to come up to my face and have a go at me, fine. Yeah. I'll have more respect for you that way because you'll tell me what you think. That's fine. I do the same. I cannot help myself. If someone... I don't like someone that I deal with, I'll tell it to their face. Yeah. And 
maybe it's come to blows a couple of times in the past. <laughs> but the point being is, I'm not scared in doing that. No. Yeah. Yeah. And and people who see this, stand up. It's time to stand up and protect each other. And if someone is being thingo, give it back to them, see how they like it yeah, in that yeah. sense. Or actually, don't give it back to them. No, but go beyond yeah. that. Block, well, I mean, yeah. block them. But just, you know, they could be of weak character. They could be the same thing, you know. Yeah. So, you know, saying that I shouldn't have said that, but what you should be doing is rise above it. Yeah. yeah. Don't give them the satisfaction of even responding. No. Yeah. You know? that, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for a bite. They're yeah. looking for a bite because they're protected behind a computer monitor. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, there are so many good groups out there that, you know, are really honestly trying to do a good job and it just it wastes their time as well you know if they're constantly having to go back through posts and block people and delete comments and you know it's just it's really really poor and it you is. Know, I've, especially over the last couple of months i've watched a lot of groups that are starting to work really well together you know the the community's really coming together mm. and you know the last thing that anyone needs is idiots making up false profiles and going through and dumping on everyone so yeah and i'm sorry i just yeah I should get off. I this. I should get. I can't get off my soapbox about this one. I'm sorry, guys. That's no. It's that, a big one. It, it is. It is a huge one. And also, awesome. thank you, Nathan um, Johnson, for for standing up and actually. He posted this on on the Naked Zombie website, and I thank you for that, mate. Because at the end of the day, you done well. Yeah, yeah. Yep. He has done very well. I'm very very happy to, to have someone well, tell I'm him happy how he it hasn't is. been bullied or harassed in that way. Well, look, he, I'll say he has, yeah. to be honest with you, and I think he's had a gut for well. I think a lot of people have had enough yeah. of it, and a, as the groups should be sticking together. We're not out to prove anything or do anything besides what we do. You know, oh, like exactly. the, the guys, you know, when darkness falls in India, I mean, I'm supporting that because I think it's totally different, fantastic, and it's something that hasn't been really done before. Yeah. That's why the zombie is supporting that, because I think what they're doing is they're doing it the hard way. You know, they are putting themselves out there and they are trying to bring something Australian-made and, and, and a concept that is just it's about death. I mean, how final can you get? Well, and, and, and having that culture in it. Yeah, and that's right. And, and to actually sit with people in their dying stages yep. and, and interview yeah. them and stuff like that, that that takes a lot of courage because some, you know, I don't know if I could sit down and do it. Yeah, that no, scares I, me shitless. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't watch someone die. No. No. No, I can't. I, 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 I have, and it's not pleasant, but, you know, it's sort of that thing where, you know, <laughs> what can you do? Yeah, I mean, there's times up, your time's up. Mm. You know, and, and it's just oh, a shame. exactly, yeah. But that's that's just my viewpoint on that particular subject matter. Um, and I'm sorry about the language tonight, folks. And I might have to put explicit <laughs> on there, so the younger ones don't really, you know, hear me carrying on and swearing. But look, I. I don't swear when I'm actually on proper, proper radio. <laughs> I'm very, very good at not doing because I've been, I've done proper, proper, proper radio lots and lots of times, so I'm very good at my P's and Q's. But this is my show and I can damn friggin' say what I want to say about it when I feel like I want to say... Off the soapbox, Brad. Calm All down. I'm right, sorry. Calm down. Take the milk crate away. Yep, that's it. Bookman <laughs> <laughs> um, needs it back. Okay, so whatever else we got there, Wadsy? Nothing. I'm just looking at the uh, Naked Zombie website. Yep. Or the uh, Facebook page, and there's a lot of stuff on there that you've put on there. And what's this uh, photo of you with uh, some sort of green mask on? Green mask on. Yeah. Oh, that's my. Um, that's my. Okay. This is so people do recognise you because you look like that normally. <laughs> yeah. What is? I it's normally a blue one or something. What it is? I years ago. Oh no! For my 40th birthday, I have mates who work in the horror film industry over in the USA. For my 40th, they sent me one of the original props from Friday the 13th. It's it's like a number, the second one out of the second movie. It's it's even got like the the prop code on there and everything. It's that one. Yep. Setting up there, and as a joke, I put it on, put my hat on, put my glasses on, <laughs> so people recognise me in the street. You know, I don't want people to get confused; that'd be embarrassing. So, yes, I do put weird oh, stuff you on there. You zit on your nose. You didn't want people to see it. No, no, no. That's just my nose. Oh, okay. Sorry. It's just big and red. <laughs> and ugly. Oh, cheers! Thanks. That's all right. Oh. Hey, we're going to talk about the um, what we did the other night with the uh, oh yeah walk around the cemetery. Oh, that was brilliant. Yeah, that was absolutely. Moonlight Tools rocks, man. I mean, 
I got an email from Chris today. Yep. Uh, absolutely. Thank you very much, Chris, for sending that email. Look, Chris looks after the Boggo Road jail side, I think, as part of the, 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 the unit there and that. Um, and Chris also run this. You were given the tour, Liam, and my God, I have I am so friggin' impressed. The amount of moonlight knowledge tours. you've got is unbelievable. Mate, Mate, folks, if, unbelievable. If you take the time and you come to Brisbane or you live in Brisbane, you haven't done it, moonlight tours of the South Brisbane Cemetery. I won't call it Dutton Park Cemetery anymore no, because, because I was corrected. Yes. I was corrected. It's uh, the South Brisbane, Brisbane Cemetery. Cemetery. South Brisbane Cemetery is associated with Dutton Park, which has got a nickname of Dutton Park. Because it's in the suburb. It's in the suburb. That's yeah. right. But the tour was absolutely phenomenal. Um, people were fantastic. Yep. Um, the, the, the education that I personally got from it and you got my, my, and my son loved Wadsy it. Junior. Yeah, he loved it. Absolutely loved yeah. it. And I was just like, mate, your knowledge, seriously, it scared me. <laughs> you, 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 you walked up to a certain team, so it's, oh, this, and bang, straight off with the information. Yep. And just over there, you know, that person associated with that person, and, and it was absolutely mind blowing. Yep. The only, th- only bad thing I got to say about it I got is, one. is that friggin'. Headstone that I posted on the on the fan site with that lady's. Oh, have you got that on there? Have you? I've got. Oh, I man, couldn't see that. That look, you know what I like it with dolls, but that thing just reminded me of a doll, and it, it's like this this woman's face so, actually. Yeah, Minna Rose. Minna Rose. That's Min, it. Minna Rose yeah. face, and they've actually carved this face out of her on her tombstone. And to trouble what freaked me out even more, they gave her pupils. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's got these two dots right eyes and it looks like she's just looking into your soul and she's about to devour it. Oh, man, that just gave me the absolute willies. But, man, congratulations. That was no, thank a you. phenomenal tour. Have you have you along as well. So. Yep. And it was great. We got to speak to people. We got to interact with everyone else. And it was so, so interestingly done. I mean, and the fact, simple fact, what I loved about it also was the great care you guys took with the patrons who were there. Yeah. Unit Cemetery, the ground's unstable, but you actually, you were basically guiding people through, make sure there was no trip. I mean, I work in an environment where occupational health and safety is just paramount, and I was just so gobsmacked with the amount of diligence that the people there were taking, looking after the the, the 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 people who went there yep. and, and I managed to have a chat to a few of them and they were just absolutely over the moon with the tour so thank you Liam man I just not, cannot not a problem at all glad you glad you liked oh, it oh mate look just because yeah. you're mate it means nothing because I hated it I'd tell you yeah <laughs> straight off the bat if I thought it was rubbish I would tell you but no I was absolutely um, yeah yeah no I was very impressed very impressed. And we'd love to hear more about that history yeah. stuff, man, because yeah, oh, absolutely. God, I don't so know where you retain it all. passion, so. Oh, my God, no wonder you've got a bloody degree in bloody, was it? Well, archaeology, archaeology, archaeology and anthropology. And anthropology, anthropology yeah. management. That's Any other ology you want to throw ology? in there? <laughs> <laughs> biology? I've got, I've got a degree in bullology. Have you? Yeah. I went to the University of State in the bleeding obvious. Yep. Yep. Pass. And 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 actually because because of Irish background like you know how the clans yeah I um, mean my 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 less sense has come where did are we try <laughs> clan the what sorry where the, are we <laughs> <laughs> no, was, was, it, was it taken over by the Nev man or Tom Tom <laughs> clan <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> a, oh buddy I tell you what oh God you're in your Nev man dude seriously like hey, nothing wrong with my Nev man no seriously I touched this thing and my fingers got stuck to it it's that old and well, look I've owned about fifteen. Um, like GPSs since like me, me and Wazzy used that's to work because you keep on breaking them yeah they're because they get used this this <sighs> thing honestly it was I bought it in um, when was it must have been what six seven years ago when it mate it was before then it's no, been, it was... no you bought it when we were still working together yeah yeah and I've been back Hang three on. years that's here I was five. in New Zealand for three years yeah, so the six already. It's still working. Seven years. I'm talking Maybe eight, eight years. Eight years. Maybe eight years. No, no, not the fact that it's still working. It was the cheapest surprised. one on the market at the time. It still cost me exceptional to get eight no, years. No, no, no. The plastic is actually starting to biodegrade, <laughs> and so I picked up. Went, oh my god, it's the grossest thing I've ever held. It's starting and to droop off. The it, was, it was like it had this. It's sticky. not that bad. And I'm going. Why is this so sticky? I'm looking at him funny in the car, going. This is not right, dude. Just because it's got a female voice on it doesn't mean anything. Hey, hey, I refuse to put the female voice on. I'm not getting told where to go by a female. 
I've got a live one that'll do me that. Oh, I was going to say, <laughs> and send all your hate mail to. <laughs> I get told what to do, and I, and I absolutely love it. My wife tells me what to do all the time. She's just because you've got no idea what to do. Yeah, well, that's beside the point. I never yeah. claim to know anything. <laughs> but, mate, honestly, uh, Moonlight Tours, big thank you to Chris and everyone and yourself for actually taking the time and, and with us, and we had a ball. Yep. Go. The Haunts of Brisbane website, any information you want, just and, hit that. And, and the money that you guys raise goes straight back into That's right, so every tour. cent goes straight back into the You cemetery, guys do it so. for nothing, and which I'm just, you know, and the amount of work you'd have to... And the amount of work... People. Hey? Helping dead people. No, it's, yeah, helping dead people. Oh, God. I just think I should just advertise for that new co-host now. <laughs> just just, just to turn just, this mic off and just pretend that it's on. Yeah, just uh, just click this button here. Hey, you just keep talking, Wadsy. <laughs> hey, here we go. The fans love me. They do love you, Wadsy. They love you and two loaves of bread. Um, okay, so that was Brent. And anything else you want to add to Moonlight Tours, man? I know I'm plugging this crap out of it, but it's awesome. I had such a ball. I had so much fun. Okay, yeah, um, with the Moonlight Tours, the next one, next date's gone up as of last night, and mm-hmm. for the life of me, I can't remember when it is, end of uh, last Friday in September. That's right, um, September. But yeah, by all means, just go by Haunts of Brisbane. I'm and going again. Click Dude. on the events link, and yeah, the date will come up. I'll be away on that one. Hey? I'll be away for that one. Oh, that's right, you're going to that special clinic over in Spain, aren't you? No, Bundaberg. Oh, the special clinic, but I think the Spain ones might be more appropriate, man, because, you know, that Dr. Patel, he was in Bundaberg, and... What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, Dr. Patel, <laughs> you know, the Bundaberg doctor. Yes. Lost lots of patients. Only <laughs> because so, they got sick. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They got sick. Yeah, that's it. Uh, but, yeah, awesome. So, um, and what else is happening on that side of things? Um, yeah, just before before we get off Moonlight Tours, yeah. just while I think of it as well, we've got another special, bit of a special Halloween um, sort of horrible history one coming up as well on the 26th of October, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, just that weekend as well. Hey, what are so. we going to do for Halloween, guys? It's coming up. What are we going to... What is the naked zombie going to do for Halloween? What day of the week is it? It's a Wednesday. That's Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, that, it might be post your bedtime, was he? It might be so like, you know... You're my number one fan. <laughs> oh, he just gave me the... He flipped me the bed. <laughs> it's a lovely thing you do. No, I said, you're my number one fan. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely... Look, I, got, I got two friends. <laughs> so we're sitting there flipping each other the bird. It's great radio. But, yeah, so... Actually, let's hear from the zombie listeners. What should Naked Zombie Radio do for Halloween? Should we do a Halloween special? I think we should. Maybe we should go knock on all our listeners' doors going, trick or treat. I'd just leave you on the front door. So no. <laughs> I'll, I'll be the trick or the treat? No, you'll be the trick. I'll, tr- I'm, I'm no, yeah. eye candy over here is the treat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he will dance for you. We're, we're going to... Actually, we're, we're going to auction off somebody tonight. Option? Auction. Auction. Well, see, we, we need to raise money for the zombie, right? Because we do everything for nothing, you know, and, and basically we just probably spend more money than we'd, we make. I think we should auction one of us off to raise money for the zombie for, for a dinner at a restaurant here in Brisbane. But, 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 but they, they have, have to pay. Travel. <laughs> hey? They have to travel expenses and food expenses. Yes. Yes. yes but they so we just get a free meal out of it. We, 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 that's it. We get a free meal. They get to take one of us out for tea. And you get to pick who you get to take. Myself, Wadzi, Liam. So they're going to bid for us plus pay for a meal. Hell yeah. That's how we're going to do it. As long as it's not in like Pennsylvania or... No, 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 in Brisbane. In Brisbane. So what we're going to do is... And it's got to be... Can't be a McDonald's? Well, it could be a McDonald's <laughs> if you want. I reckon... I said it can't be a McDonald's. And, and what we'll do is... drive through. And what we'll do is, to make it even more fun, we'll actually... You can you can shout that we'll, like, we'll buy our own dinner. We'll all go, but you have to shout that one person too. Right. And, and raise money. We're going to start the auction off. Auction starts tonight... Uh, Halloween night, you want to do it? Yeah, the yeah. Halloween night. Okay, this is what's going to happen. We're going to hold an auction for the, for one of the one of the boys. You get to take him out for tea at one place. Joined by the rest of us, we can actually make it Halloween night on that weekend night. Yep, we'll pay for our own dinner, and but whoever you auction, whoever wins the highest bid, has to pay a course. So but they get he, he just work. buys a main course and. We buy entrees and we'll just pick off his plate. Basically, yeah. and we'll watch him starve. Yeah. Well, we're we looking at him one, just because he's a, just because he's the eye candy. It's going to pick him. Everyone's got to pick Liam, of course. Yeah. So it's going to be a bidding war just between the two of you, I think. 
Yeah, well, I'll bid on you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's it. We're going to hold a naked zombie auction, and bidding starts at one dollar. <laughs> I'll put it up on the website. Seriously, bidding war. It's going to be a bidding war. Dollar and one. You're going to dollar and one yep. to take, and who you want to go take out to take? I'll take the girlfriend out. No, no, it doesn't work that. Oh, oh. God, why is it so hard? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll explain a bit later on later on the show. So that's... Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, I can't. Hey, it makes good TV. Oh, oh God. <laughs> hey, speaking of TV... What a segue. I knew I said it for a reason. Uh, it's not a segue. Well, well, I'm, 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 I'm going to... Look, even though we haven't talked about much naked debate tonight, I think it's good to have a chat occasionally. Well, I've got on the sofa because I have a little rant now. I'll talk about something else. In Australia here, if you listen overseas, we have this new TV show called um, I Will Survive. We do? We do. That's how much you know about it. Do <laughs> right, you remember the movie Priscilla, Queen of the Desert? Oh, yes. Yes, uh, okay, I've so seen shorts if, for this one. If, if Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Anyway, I was listening to the radio this morning, as I do on the way to work. Listen to radio. Listen to TV in your car? Well, I do, actually, but it gets very distracting. <laughs> 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 but, well, okay, well, what, what, okay. Anyway, so they've, dis- they've spent a fortune on this advertising and put yep. this set. It's even got one of the original guys of High Five in it. See, once you got a bit too old for High Five, because it looked a bit odd, they... they no, just High. High Five. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get in trouble. You can, can you can you are going to oh. get us all in freaking trouble one day. Um, <laughs> what it is, they've set this set, and basically these bunch of guys who got to dress up in drag and perform in rural parts of Australia. Yeah, rural, rural parts. Well, rural, 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 rural But the parts. scary thing is they only got about 500,000 people who watched the, the main episode. Yeah? And and they had the, like, the carry-on and they only got about 300,000. Which and in Australian terms... And friends. When Australian television, that's pretty low for a show. Yeah. So I viewers, survived, on. and this is the, the clincher, I survived doesn't look like it's going to survive. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to crash and burn like... Uh, what's that dancing well, one that they had? Well, everybody here? dance now. It's gone. I think that lasted all of two episodes. Two episodes. All the gone. What's, what's going on with Australian television? Seriously. Well, they need a million, million viewers, 900,000 to a million viewers before they even think about it. Well, that dancing show, I think that was along that the same lines. I think it only had 500,000 odd it, on the it, first it show like, and it was down to about 250, who cares? the next. I mean, look, I really enjoyed The Voice, right? I hate reality shows, period, to start off, especially like big X Brother. Factor and Big Brother. And all. I mean, I'm not a big fan of either of those, but I do... I have been watching the ex, um, Big Brother for one person. That geek. Um, is that Ben? Ben. I don't know his name mm-hmm. is. He, he's I think built it's like, Ben. I've built like a string pole. Yeah. And he's, he is so uncoordinated, but I reckon he's the coolest bloke in the house. Yeah, but you but, see him, he tried to hit on the prettiest girl in the house. Why not? Well, exactly. Why not Geek the top? is this new chic. That's yeah. the thing. This this young fella, man, he, he, I'll give him credit. He's awesome. He's, he's a, I actually enjoy watching the show because of him because he's actually got some personality about him. Yeah, but Australia broadcasters seem to be spending a lot of money at the moment on absolute rubbish. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. and I've always been a big fan of Australian-owned content. Yeah, I, I look, I'm not a watcher of TV, to be honest with you. I don't watch a lot. I do like a few shows and that. But I really enjoyed The Voice, of all things, because that was real talent that went on that show. They had to audition first before they come on. Uh, the X Factor and all the rest of it, no, not a big fan. I'm not really into sound. Uh, celebrity dance, I don't know what that's called. I, nah, not interested. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this is a type of thing. Where are we going wrong with Australia? What they need is a bloke good paranormal show, TV show. I think so. I, I think do. so. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, not, they're not, I'm just because we're into it or something, but I think we're missing out. And this is where this whole story of me having a whinge has come at. <laughs> I think as a paranormal culture here in Australia, we are severely missing out. We are missing out on the opportunity for some people out there to really shine. Yep. I mean, and do a good job. I have no interest in that whatsoever. I do really don't want to be on TV. I have no... Uh, no, not for me. Maybe you, Liam, you want to be a bit of bike. You're a bit of bike candy. You've got that young... Your wife thinks I'm trying to bloody... C- Con on you, isn't she? She would, Jeff. Yeah, she does. Like she, she, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She'd take you on and do you. What? She'd take you on and beat me up. Yes. Not, yeah, yeah, God, you're. Oh, God. It's gone, She'd si- beat you it's up. gone silent. It has, now. yes. Uh, anyway, so this is the thing it's, it's that whole purpose of I would love to see 
some there is a lot of good writers out there who have come up some but why why is it in Australian television nowadays why is it all turned to rubbish why isn't there anything because good anymore Am I just old and getting senile and just cranky? We're and turning to grumpy old men. We are turning to grumpy old with men. With Australian television, you're only allowed... You have to have a specific percentage. I can't remember what it is. It might be 20 or 30% that has to be Australian content as well. Yeah. So you're allowed to buy, you know, yeah. overseas, which is fine because there's a lot of great shows. I mean, I love The Big Bang Theory because I just I think that's hilarious. I like uh, I like Mythbusters. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that show is fantastic. It's gone on for a long time now. Uh, it I'm just not rotates gonna... stations. Each station Yeah, it does. It up, yeah. That's, that's fine. We've got a lot of stations now. But they're, they're, I, I, oh, The Turtle Man, he, uh, that's a new one that's just come out. Uh, that's just like... Is that a kid's show? No, the Turtle Man is a guy who jumps into ponds and, and catches and turtles, turtles with his bare and hands. snakes and bare hands. He's he's mad as a half cut snake. Oh, is that like the um, crocodile hunters down the Florida redlands and yeah, like yeah. like swamp people. Swamp but, people, yeah, I mean, yeah. swamp like, people, but yeah, just more off the chain. Yeah, I mean, look, <laughs> I, I enjoy I enjoy American Pickers. Right, I enjoy that because of the stuff they find and the history and all the rest of it. I also enjoy. Um, there's two porn. There's hardcore porn, yep, which I really, really dislike, and I will not let my kids watch it, only because it's just, I don't know. The, the, he's, he's, it's, he seems like he's ripping everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just, it just seems like I could have made money on that type thing. That's great. I mean, and that's fine. No, that's, that's, real that's, life, that's real life business. But there's also another one which I'm trying to remember the name. There's is, another uh, one, porn, porn stars. Porn stars. Yeah. Porn stars. Which I, I got re- so disappointed when they were short when I, they were advertising that. And then it actually came on, it was about porn brokers. I think it's awesome. I actually really like no, that because... I thought it was something else. Yeah. Look, I don't particularly like <laughs> The Sun, but I love I love the old man, like the, yep. the old grumpy yeah. old bug, I couldn't yeah. relate. And I like the dad because not only do they explain the items that come in, they also got a story and a history behind them yeah. as well. That's what I like about it. That, that to me, that's interesting, not... Having people blue and fight and and rest. I'm over this whole aggression. So you don't watch Repo Man? Oh God, no. <laughs> oh God. I mean that. I mean I don't know. Is it just? Is it just me? It must be because I just don't. It's oh, the Operation Repo. Which yeah, yeah, Operation it Repo. Kind of. It, Kind of had a bit of a draw for the first episode it's like until watching I found out that it's, it's all completely fake. Yeah. The, the, the trouble and is, then it just it's like watching a like a, a car wreck. You, you can't but help. Yeah, you can't. Stairs. You can't turn away. away from it. It's like let's go. I hate the show. But just go watch it. It's like um, I enjoyed, um, believe it or not, which is a show I'd never thought I'd like. Was um, um, the dog? Um, oh, the dog, the bounty hunter. hunter. I actually, oh, love. I just thought. Gotta find Jesus, man. Gotta find Jesus. Yeah, you know, he's like he, uh, never he, he, he's got like the bear mates. <laughs> that stuff's a take down wife, bears. His wife, who's ex worldwide wrestling, I think. Yeah, she, she's she's like she can't see past her breasts. <laughs> oh, I mean, this is what about, what about Fat Pizza? Oh, look, Fat Pizza was brilliant. If you yeah. look, Google folks overseas, Fat Pizza was an Australian production. Had fat all pizza, the fat and the cheesy. The fat and the cheesy. It was based on a pizza delivery thing, and it was the f- it was true. It was it was very ethnic. Like they had poorly, like poorly, yep. yeah. They're, they're also of Italian or um, oh, what was um, not Italian, mm, no. uh, Lebanese, like, Lebanese, Lebanese, Lebanese yeah. but Australian Lebanese. Yeah, they had yeah. that whole. Yeah, like, yeah, mate, my car's faster than your one, mate, hey, mate. So <laughs> they, hey, mate, you're drinking my Tawana, mate. <laughs> so I think, and it was brilliant because I loved it because it was so politically incorrect. It was just a brilliant show. Oh, politically incorrect is an understatement. Um, the movie, uh, Fat Pizza, the movie. The movie yeah. Oh, it had Angry Anderson. And <laughs> they're in the drug People lab. Were to get onto it. <laughs> I mean, to me, it was only ever shown on SBS, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, this is the thing. The SBS has more content now, with good viewing than than I've seen a lot of the major networks in Australia now. And and we get into the pop culture side of it here. There's been a lot of great shows that Australia has produced. I mean, back in the early days, we had Prisoner, we had uh, Number Sixty Nine. Um, yeah, you know, that was the first Australian TV show that actually showed full on nudity. Yep. 
The uh, Box. They? The Box, which was a spin off of 69. Yeah, see, yep. the, the Box. Well, yeah, the Block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we had, all the, in the early days, I'm not talking about the Sullivan Zone, that was a bit before my time, but I remember as a kid watching it. But back in the like the early 70s, late 60s, maybe early 80s, we Once had a lot of... past play school. Yeah, part when I got past play school. We had, they had Brent Strain... TV shows. Yeah. And they were fantastic. And I remember as a kid. Now, the trouble is nowadays is because everything's kind of progressed to another level, it's it's all got to be edgy and all this. What, is what it happens? Because they're trying to cater for the overseas market and they're forgetting about local market. Well, see, the local market isn't cop anymore. And this is the thing we're not. If they're doing that, they're missing out because what they're doing oh, is exactly, they're, they're yeah. taking bits and pieces out of shows from overseas and they're trying to put them together in something for us here. And we're not. Necessarily, why that way? But it's yeah. there doesn't seem to be any want or direction to try and do anything that's long term either. It's everything that seems to be you know produced in Australia at the moment. It's all reality and really, it's, it's not series. supposed to. Yeah, it's it's not built to go past ten episodes to the season. Yeah, you know? no, and then no. if it does come back next season, it's you know a whole new concept and. But yeah, they've killed no off half of them and stuff. Have, you know, a series that runs for six seasons, or you yeah. Know. I mean, I wasn't into McLeod's Daughters or anything like that, which is a, which was a good. Uh, so I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm not into Neighbours, I'm not into Baywatch, no. I'm not into any of this stuff. But there are a lot of people are, which is great. They they enjoy that sort of six o'clock programming type thing. But I think we are missing out. Look, and we got Sky TV and stuff like that, so we do get a lot of the paranormal shows come over here. But I'd really love to see an Australian team, proper paranormal researchers and investigators get given a chance to shine. Um, and I know that the guys who are doing When Darkness Falls by India, that's a documentary. That's not a TV series. That's, that's something totally different again. But I'd love to see something in Australia that's true Australian, that yep. is true Australian talent yeah. with true Australian locations that... Just and they're not a bunch of morons, if you know. What I mean, actors trying to be paranormal investigators. Exactly. Yeah. Like and the Shire. That Shire. God, don't even start yeah. me on the Shire. I just get really toey and grumpy and oh bugger. I want to say listen oh. to this. Probably not. That's all right because I'm going We've to sit. Here's a film now, now as well. Do you see? Sorry? The GCs on now as well. What's the GC? Oh, it's it's GC. like the Shire, but on the Gold Coast. Oh, God. oh gosh! Oh, because oh, it's scraping the bottom of the friggin' oh, barrel. I think we're up to about episode two or episode three of that now. It's been out the last couple of weeks. Oh, what channel is that on so I can avoid it? Yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't actually well, caught an episode actually, of it yet. So. Switch channels and see it. Like see, the, the question, the question is, because we're in like. I'm 40, you're mid-40s, you're turning 40-ish, <laughs> mid-30s. Because we're in that age generation, are we sort of so out of touch with what's good television nowadays that we sort of think back to what was good and we sort of reminisce about it? Like, I remember some TV shows that I loved as a young fellow, but I watched them down and I think, my God, how did I get excited about that? You know, type yeah, thing. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, it's like you, so you have, basic in you, comparison to a lot of stuff like, on TV now, and you think, you know, what did I see in that? But I mean, it, and it I love Doctor Who. Easier time anyway. Yeah, so I'm, yeah. a, I'm a big fan of you. But thing is, you know, with Doctor Who or something like that, this is a geek side. So <laughs> <laughs> with Doctor Who, I loved the original series of Doctor Who, like, yeah, you know, with Tom Baker oh, and, and stuff. Tom Baker was my hero. When I, was I, got to touch, I got to touch his clothes. Tom Baker's clothes when I was working at Wetter Workshop. Was he the one who had a super long scarf? Big scarf. Yeah, yeah big, like, like the jelly mate, babies. you'd be five miles away from you, you still touch his scarf. Oh, mate, I'm a sort... No, I touched his... I, I just... I, Richard Taylor took me and showed me that... Oh, it's just... Oh. And then... But I love the new series. I, I love... I love what David Tennant has done. Um, Eggleston, what he did, you know, when they brought him back. Yep. And, I, and Matt Smith, to me, has done a brilliant job. They're each totally different personality and characters. But, my God, it's good. The British know how to make a good TV show. Oh, they do. Oh, Mrs. They Brown's Boys. Have. By God, how wrong was that show? But it's it's hilariously funny. Yep, yep. It's it's brilliant. It's it's a guy dressed up as an old Sheila, and 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 it's so politically wrong again, but it's funny. It's general. Look, the British, in my view, make great comedies. Red Dwarf. Big yep. fan. Red Dwarf. IT I mean, crowd. Sure you got Dad's Army. You got. Da- oh, are you being Vincent, served? Ain't half hot mum. Ain't half hot mum. Um, um, uh, what's wrong with Frank Spencer in it? Um, um, uh, uh, Frank, that's, um, some mothers do have them. Yes. Yep. Uh, yeah. One and two. <laughs> <laughs> I've made the boo boo. <laughs> yeah, type thing. And you got uh, great. Look, that's going back there. Hogan's uh, Heroes. Hogan's Heroes. Hogan's Heroes was American. 
So it was too, sorry. Yeah, so I yeah. get it right. Slap, slap. Uh, the goodies. I know yeah. nothing. <laughs> but the goodies. The goodies. Brent, the British have Finally a fantastic me. way of producing these sitcoms, like the comedies. And it, and and they're and so taking out of themselves. I yeah, mean, like but you got the um, yes minister and yes prime minister taking yeah, out of the political system, system. and, and, and um, to the men are born taking out of the hierarchy system. Yeah, and that's right. And it's freaking hilarious. Um, one of my favourites, Father Ted. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, Rook, 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 Nickers. I mean, Father Jack Hackett. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, as far as kids sitcoms go, brilliant. Yeah. You get. You get British to do a serious... They do a good serious drama as well. Um, I can't rename any, but I do, I've do. i seen a few. Uh, Minder. Minder, exactly right. Yep. But you've got the American side now. And the Americans, uh, in my view, make they do make really good, um, like CSI. Yep. Uh, yep. I hated CSI, Naomi, with that. What's that guy's name? David. He played Horatio oh. with the glasses. Can't yes. his last name now. Where's he, where's he go? He goes... Yes, I will tell you about that later. Yes. <laughs> it's got that whole thing, and it annoyed the crap out of me, but yeah. I really enjoyed CSI. I really enjoyed, um, oh, what's it called, uh, NCIS, you know, yeah, with yeah. The, the naval one. Um, I, I really enjoyed, they do a really good drama, drama, and they do make a couple of good comedies. What about the ones like... Um, Lost and uh, yeah, well, I never really got Alcatraz into and Lost. Like that. Alcatraz. No, I didn't really get into them because yep. they didn't float my boat. viewing boat, as yeah. it were. I mean, I know Alcatraz. Was, I quite enjoyed Alcatraz, but Lost, I couldn't get into. Yeah, them. well, see, Alcatraz really didn't last that long either, did it? Yeah, well, it's well, only the first series. The, the problem with a lot of these American shows that we do buy is that you know, down the track, you'll actually find out that they've been running for eight seasons <laughs> already, <laughs> but we only ever seem to get three yeah. quarters of the third yeah. season or something. So yeah. you know, they but sort of bring you halfway yeah. through and it to try and catch up, and it doesn't, it doesn't, know, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I mean, you got like the British did when they do like a sci-fi version. I mean, Red Dwarf was was sci-fi, but as a comedy. But you look at things like the um um oh god, what is it um sanctuary. I think was British. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Sanctuary. And you also then you had the American version of that was Warehouse 13. Yep. Which I loved. I Warehouse loved. 13 was mm. fantastic. Um, brilliant, brilliant show. Why can't Australia produce kick ass shows like that? I mean, really good. Why are we heading down the road towards the whole friggin'. Um, uh, Dollars. Yeah, no, it's not. But they're not making money from it. Yeah. They're spending money, and the shows are being cancelled because they're rubbish. Exactly, because they can't spend enough money on them to make no, no, no. good shows. Uh, what? Uh, what's that one I just talked about Shire. before? No, not the show. Oh, God, I didn't mention that. <laughs> uh, that other one, that, that other thing, um, uh, I Will Survive. Yes. They spent a friggin' mint putting that together. Absolute mint. A lot, a lot of money. And it fail, it's failing miserably. Because who wants to see a bunch of grown men run around and drag out in the bush? Yep. We had Priscilla Queen. It's been Quinn. done. Yeah. It's been done. We've had Priscilla yeah. Queen in the desert. The movie was brilliant. I love the movie because it had us told a story. Yes. What they're doing is setting up a stage production. And, and seriously, I have no interest in... I have no problems with anybody who... Okay, this is why I look at it. I don't have a problem with someone who dresses up as drag to perform or something like that. That's their lifestyle. That's... I'm, Really cool with that. Yeah. I think that's awesome because they are being their true selves. These blokes are not that. Yeah. No. They don't live that lifestyle. If you live that lifestyle, I couldn't care if you're a bloke walking up the main street of Brisbane, you're in full Drake, right? Fine. That's your lifestyle. Good on you. I give you full kudos for that because you're showing your individual and personality. And I've always been big on that. Yep. But if you take a bunch of Aussie blokes, dancers or singers, who dress up in Drake, it's like it's not... It's like the end-of-year football production. It is end of year football yeah, production, yeah. and and that's exactly right. I can't work out why Australian producers here are saying, "Oh, I've got this wonderful idea. We'll just rob it off something else, mm. give but us I a think, sh- yeah. crap load of money, and we'll just destroy it anyway." Yeah, and that was. I don't think they ever looked at any kind of marketing ploy apart from 
you know, the fact that it's a bunch of guys dressing up in drag and mm. they did it just, you know, sheerly for the shock value of it. And, and I think they worked on that, that, you know, oh, we'll come up with something that's, you know, a bit scandalous yeah. and a bit shocking and that apparently will get it across the line. No. You know, yeah. And we're missing the whole we're point not that there's no storyline or anything to no. go with it. See, Priscilla Queen of the Desert, and this is, this, uh, it is called Naked Zombie Paranormal Pop Culture and we do talk about a lot of pop culture stuff. I probably want to hear about the paranormal stuff, but I think this is also important because this is where it relates to us. Pop culture-wise, we had great movies like Priscilla Queen of the Desert. So yep. Brent loved the movie. Mm. It was very controversial, it was a great movie, and, and music was brilliant. It brought that lifestyle out into the open. It brought that well, out into the like, I think that was the big flip side of it, is that the whole drive of Priscilla was that there were you know, a couple of guys who did like to dress up in drag, yeah. and that was the lifestyle that they chose to lead, yeah. you know, and hats off to them, because it was, you know, they were being true to themselves. They were being true to themselves. It was sort of almost like a mockumentary of you know, how society perceived them and the troubles yeah. that they had in yeah. getting to where they yeah. wanted to go versus this whole concept of I will survive which is just the complete opposite and almost making a mockery of it. It is making you know. a mockery of the lifestyle and look I don't care what your lifestyle is if that's the way you choose to live that's your choice and good on you for, for sticking I'm real big behind that I make no apologies for that but w why can't we as an Australian society actually stand up and say you're just feeding us rubbish yep. absolute rubbish I mean well obviously they did because they didn't watch it yeah but, but they're spending the money you know what I mean? They're, they're well, wasting even like the dancing show. show. But they, most of these productions get funding from government bodies produce this yeah. crap. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There's okay. We come up to horrorcon, right? There's so many very good horror writers in Australia. It's not funny. Seriously, horror writers in Australia we outnumber a lot of other countries because, oh my God, the summer work is brilliant. Yeah, you know I mean, and, and the knowledge and, I mean. Fine. With what was that horror movie Australia made? Um, oh God, what was that one with? Oh God, oh, tell me my The one out at Wolf Creek. Yeah, Wolf, Wolf Creek. Creek. Yeah. yeah, Wolf Creek. Absolutely scared that the absolute a, crap that out wasn't of me. A horror movie? That was a mockumentary. That, yeah, right. My ass it was. That was brilliant. Wolf Creek was good. That was the um, documentary on the uh, those murders. That, yeah. Um, yeah. So that wasn't a horror movie. Well, but but, but it was well done. Yeah. Well, to me, it was well yeah. done. Yeah, Wolf Creek was with, well done. Uh, yeah. But it basically, John went, Jarrett. John, John Jarrett, yeah, yeah. yeah. it, it wasn't the cinema's like, was it? Homes and gardens, yeah. more interesting. Yeah. To watch. <laughs> Every time you look at me, you think it's of that laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the thing: we have such phenomenal writers here in Australia, and people with so much talent. When even even our paranormal investigating teams out there, even if they they went out and picked certain people out of each group and formed one new group to and show Australia the cultural history why we have such a brutal background, why we are a bunch of convicts and... and it's the all the English fault. All things in English, it's all the English fault, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's all their fault. Blame the Queen. <laughs> but, but this is this point. We are missing out. Australian as a society and, and the media side of things are missing out. You've got people on, on radio... Not what? media, it's also in schools. I mean, when I was at school, I was taught ancient English history, the Anglo-Saxons. Yeah. What's the point of that? Well, that's straight. I mean, we exactly. learned basic. Let's talk about the gold rush. Let's talk about the Eureka Stockade and all of it. I asked. I just, this is stupid. I asked one of the young guys at work the other day. I was talking about, you know, just general comments. Say, well, what, 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 what do you know about the Eureka Stockade? Mm. And so he gave me this blank look on his face. He had no idea what it was. Yeah. That is such a, out somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> that is such a pivotal part of Australia, the Eureka yeah. Stockade and everything like that, that. Why didn't he know that? Yeah, that you live you live here. You need to. Our history is amazing. Exactly. We might be we, young, but it's amazing. Oh, it, it grew up very quickly. Yeah. You know, the White Australia policy that only ended what in the mid sixties. Yep. Where they wouldn't well, let later than that, wasn't it? Oh, could have been early 70s, but I thought it was like yeah, 67 be, or something. Yeah, late early mid late late 60s. 60s. Yeah. Up, but I mean, Google it. I mean, what's White Australia policy, we're only white Anglo-Saxon, highly educated people allowed to come to the country. Yep. What an absolute debacle that was. It's because of our rich multicultural background, we are the country we are today. I, I fully believe if you're Australian, you're Australian, and you, and you live here, you become nationalised Australian, and you fight for your country and you do all the rest of it. I'm a big believer in that. But we are 
one big freaking country. Yeah. And we have so much history. And so look at my background, Irish, Scottish type thing. You know what I mean? That's, yeah, fine. My lot were a bunch of convicts that come over. <laughs> but, but that's what I mean. And we're getting off track a bit here. But we have so much to offer as in a paranormal TV show or we have so much talent out there as writers and, and we're wasting this talent on absolute crap that's on television today. It yes. arose in 1901 yep. and was slowly dismantled from 1949 to 1973. Oh my God, I thought it was, I thought so it was mid-60s, 70, 73, yep. early yeah. 70s. That's, I was born in 71. This was still in... You are a spring chicken. Well, you were, you were born back in the 50s. 65. 50s. 65. <laughs> <laughs> you were born out. last week from Thursday. Yep. <laughs> um, but, you know, we should take a quick ad break now because we have just been rambling on. But, look, I'm very passionate about... Because I'm in the, the no, media Australian industry. film industry has, has done some wonderful things and it's all to do with the dollar. Mm. But even then, what's come out of the Australian film industry, it only seems to be the independent, you know, that strictly independent section of the film yeah. industry that's still producing, you know, really good quality. But, yeah. Then you look at someone like Working Dog, who made... Um, the castle, the castle, yeah, the well, dish, yeah, and the, the, dish the, and the castle, the dish. They brilliant. made that in something like twelve days or something on yeah, less shoestring, than shoestring budget. budget, and they are pop culture icon movies. Yeah, yep. in Australian yeah. standards, and and. And, and Cracker Jack was another one. Yeah, um, who was oh, that one? Was um, something eggs. saves the world. Bad uh, eggs. Bad yeah. eggs. Yes. Bad eggs is brilliant. Um, I love the um, Once Were Warriors, the New Zealand one. Yep, absolutely. That was so full on. That was yeah. movie. That that was just, yeah, oh, but the, brilliant. The, the people can make films on shoestring budgets. Good films. I mean, merely they're for the Australian market. And they had to rewrite it for an yeah. American market. Yep. but it kept them employed. The thing yeah. we have an opportunity as Australians to say, stop feeding us this friggin' rubbish on TV. I mean, but every I'm country so, does, yeah. not just Australia. But every I mean, country. Yeah, does. Yeah, I know, but we seem to get more of it. Yeah, you know, yeah. Australia produces these shows that. Have no look. Fine, you got neighbours, you got all the rest. Of it. They've been going for so long now. They're part of our culture anyway. Mm. And I don't watch them, but it doesn't mean I don't appreciate what they are. No. They just keep going and going and going. Same as EastEnders and yep. and all the rest of the Coronation other things, Street. Street, Coronation yeah. Street, and all the rest. Of it. They're part of ingrained in Australian culture and pop culture now with history. And yeah, you know, they've been going for so long. I can't yeah. remember. But are we trying to become so not Americanized, but there's nothing well, oh, I love a lot of American shows, but you know, I mean, like we're trying to cater for that market instead of looking after ourselves in but a lot of ways. We're catering to the bottom end of the market, you know, where it is, you know, it's this fascination with having to come up with these new concepts for reality shows, and you know, it's catering right for that, that lowest okay. common denominator. Sarah Murdoch was hosting um, that dancing one. Oh, no, no, she no, was no, next uh, model, Australia's next model, wasn't it? No, no, so, Sarah, no, Sarah no Murdoch. Uh, Big Brother, wasn't she? No, she's not doing no. Who's doing Big Brother? That's Sonia um, Kruger. Yeah. Sonia Kruger, my God. It's like, yes, and they're standing over there yes. in the kitchen and they're talking. Well, even Big Brother, yeah. I'm not, you know, touch what I've not watched any of it yet. <laughs> no. I don't plan to, but, I mean, even they're in big trouble at the moment because it's turned out that most of the contestants are all, you know, they're all done modelling and... They've been in radio and television, yeah. and you know. So I mean, really? sort of this concept of reality, where there's yeah, yeah. not reality. The guy and the girl next door being stuffed in a house. They're not. They've you know they've all, all done the rounds. And, and the all, ads so. coming up to where like they had all these really good looking people and buff blokes. They they weren't allowed in the house. But you know, one show I really do like. Tell me, Beauty and the Geek. Because because a the hot women. <laughs> I'm sorry. I knew there was I'm a very, very heterosexual man. Yeah. And the fact that I'm a big nerd. Uh, because there was hope for blokes like me out there in the world. <laughs> He's been knocked back for every other season. Yeah, no, no, I'm just saying for blokes like that? me. Oh, like, like, like me. Oh, yeah, 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 like you the first like time. Me, yeah, yeah. Okay. But, I mean, that's the thing. It's, it's, I quite enjoy that show because I love how you take these really awkward blokes and I'm one of them. But it's amazing what a makeover will do. Oh, yeah, but, like, oh, I don't know. Look, we have some... Good shows, but there's so few and fun. And we're going to have a quick ad break right now because we've gone way past that time because <laughs> we're getting right into it tonight. You are listening to the best in Australian paranormal pop culture radio show, The Naked Zone. Yes, I'm sorry, people. We all do talk about other things besides ghosts and ghoulies from time to time. That's what keeps it interesting. And uh, we'll be back shortly after these quick commercial breaks. What do you reckon? Sounds good. Yay. Sounds good. Dude, 
need the zombie motif. <laughs> Dude, you're going to the 2012 zombie walk. <laughs> we're, we're here in Brisbane in aid of the Brain Foundation of Australia. Dude, I'm there. Uh, by the way, can you stop chewing on me now? Sorry. That's right, zombie and zombettes. The 2012 Brisbane Zombie Walk in aid of the Brown Foundation of Australia. Come and join us on the 21st of October 2012 at Victoria Park for a fun-filled day of fun and excitement in scaring the locals. For more details, go to www.brisbanezombiewalk.com. Are you looking for some really good equipment in your next ghost hunt? Then look no further than the Go Shack, based right here in Australia. The Go Shack can offer you everything from the Mel meter, EMF detectors, cameras, illuminator, brackets, spirit box, and course voice recorders. All you gotta do is go to Facebook and type in Go Shack for all your paranormal needs. And we are back with the naked zombie. Join me in the couple of box courses, Liam and Wadsy and I am. Brad Scott. Houston. Got Debonair. Debonair with my Very sexy... Debonair in the hat. Sexy, yeah. My sexy hat. You like my sexy hat? No, I wouldn't go that far. Oh, my awesome cool hat that makes it yeah. awesomely cool. That's better. And I'm off to Sydney this weekend if I haven't already mentioned it a couple of times. Anyway, so we're Where talking... Are hey? Where are you going? Um, yeah, one whoop whoop. <laughs> 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 uh, we're talking about different things tonight. And the, one of the biggest things we were talking about before, before the ad break was... How cool is Australian history when it comes to paranormal and why don't we have a decent paranormal TV show out there? The simple fact is that there's so much stuff that people don't know about in their history and a lot of us do, even in Brisbane here, like Liam was, we were talking in the ad break before. Liam, why don't you go through some of the stories we were talking about earlier, mate, like how bad this place was. Yeah, I mean, as far as it starts off, you know, sort of mid-1825 oh, when Brisbane first mm. became Moreton Bay Penal Settlement, which at that stage was, you know, the most horrific place that you could be possibly seen. Um, you know, even sort of that aside, you know, as far as sort of through the 1860s to 1880s, you know, up to 1890s, Brisbane has just an absolutely horrific history, you know, as far as how rough it was. Um, mm-hmm. And we're talking about where Albert Street is that, as it runs across the Queen Street Mall. Um, Albert Street, where it meets Elizabeth Street, and then you know, heading right the way down towards the Botanic Gardens, was a place called Frog's Hollow um, back in the late 1800s, and was really rough. It was just you know a whole heap of r- big ramshackle buildings that were being used as brothels and opium dens. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, up through that time, a lot of Chinese were moving into Brisbane, and there was you know huge problems. You know, talking about the White Australia policy as it stood, you know, only a couple of decades ago. Um, but even through the, the late 1800s, there was um, open calls in the newspaper to ri- raise funds for, like, an anti-Chinese league to force the Chinese out of Brisbane. Mm-hmm. Um, they were considered that much of a problem by yeah. the, the white settlers who were in Brisbane. Um, and right to the point where there was huge riots in Brisbane, um, massive riot broke out that went from Adelaide, to, uh, from Albert Street, right the way back to Roma Street Station, um, and then across the bridge over to South Brisbane and right up into Spring Hill where um, the residents of Brisbane just cut loose and any Chinese grocers or sh- storefronts that they came across, they trashed all the stores and set them on fire and it was a, a whole night of, you know, you sort of heartburn memories of, like, the <laughs> LA riots. You know, and the police literally stood by and, and just let it happen. There was a major inquest as to why the police had stepped back and, and not, you know, gotten involved to try and break it up. But... I mean, you know, the history like that's just amazing. A lot of people miss that point. You know, you know, a lot of people just don't know that there's that kind of history in Brisbane. Well, that's right. And a lot of these big cities, capital cities around Australia. I mean, but the amount of deaths we had in these certain locations and stuff like that, if people actually done their homework and realised that Australia is abound with some of the most roughest, traumatic, kissed, um Things that the, the earth was settled here. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. and, and settled and well, according so, to the English said, yeah, penal but, colonists. But I mean, the thing is, so imagine some of these locations. A lot of these buildings are still around. A lot of these buildings are heritage listed. Yeah, and the amount of deaths in that. Imagine the activity in these places that would be there. Oh, I huge! Mean, uh, the, you would have a literally a field trip with discovering events. I mean, look, everyone's 
heard about um, what's that bloody house? Um, oh, Newstead. Not Newstead. The most haunted house. Oh, I down in Juni at Monte Cristo. Yeah, the Monte, Monte Cristo. Cristo. Why am yeah. I forgetting stuff like that tonight? It must be because I'm tired. Uh, Monte Cristo, right? Yeah, it it has got the reputation of the most haunted house in Australia. But what about the other places that we don't know about? The other places that have this amazing history and of carnage and all the rest of it and yeah. so I mean what about places like that I mean like you were saying before they were literally pulling bodies you yeah, know from yeah. under of these buildings I mean, where people you know, have just, just you know prostitutes homeless. and yeah. you know living underneath buildings trying to eke a living and you know sort of Isn't it's full of your, opium and it's supposed to be haunted as well oh the windmill yeah, yeah oh. but I've, I've been to the um I've been to the windmill actually, yeah. and I've actually taken some photos. I've actually there's a photo of me sitting on the front steps, looking really debonair. Not really. Uh, you didn't have your hat on. That's why. No, that's probably why. But um, it was that whole yeah that windmill. There was supposed to be record. I think they used to hang people in that place. So yeah, it's a windmill is a bit of a contentious issue yeah. as to the stories that go around. But there were two hangings there. Yeah. Um, Oh, Not suicide, geez. you mean no, proper, proper, proper hanging. Yeah. Proper hangings, like you were um, a naughty boy. Yeah. And it's sort of it's up to up to interpretation. There's um, a lot of accounts that a beam was actually put out the window um, of the windmill okay. and two um, two Aborigines were hanged mm. there for killing or supposedly killing off um, an explorer down sort of around Mount Lindsay. Mm. Um, but, yeah, sort of depending on which accounts you look at, uh, one says that the beam was actually sort of put out the window of the windmill, um, but another, a lot of other accounts just say that they were hanged at the windmill. So, yeah, they could have had a structure built next to the windmill as well. But, yeah, definitely saw hangings there as well prior to mm. you know, the, the main prison being built there. And, you know, and, that's thing, and this, is, this is a windmill that's since in Spring Hill in the middle of nowhere. You know yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a cool location. Yeah. I mean, imagine being able to go into there and just sit in there for a few hours and see what you pick up and stuff like that. Well, I mean, there's even in the city, you've got Burnett Lane that runs just in behind. Mm. I think it's like a sports store there yeah. you know, off the back of Queen Street Mall. And Burnett Lane, as it stands now, where it sits mm. now, that was sort of right pretty much smack bang where all the prisoners' barracks were, you know, from the earliest days of Brisbane being Morton Bay Penal Settlement. And right sort of where Rankins is on the mall now, right in smack bang in the mm. middle of the mall, there were huge crosses set up in the dirt and, you know, that was multiple prisoners would be strapped to those crosses and lashed, you know, lashed all day. Wow. Man, we but have such... No one thinks of that when they walk through the Queen Street mall. mall. No, they don't. They think it's just a place where to go and grab some red rooster or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, that's, that's the thing. But this, this is what people have got to realise, that... No matter where, which part of the country you come from, or which city you live in, even if it's one of the rural cities or country, you know, the towns, we had such a amazing history. And if someone actually looked into it, like a producer or someone like that, and actually worked out, hey, there is so much stuff happened here. Imagine the sort of production that you could make. Yeah. Imagine a sort of show, like a paranormal show or something like that, you could actually put together. It doesn't even have to be a. It could just be a history show on on Australia. It's still the rubbish you get nowadays. And have something really cool and honest and raw and and you know we've all heard about the gold mines and all the rest of it and, and we've heard all the good stuff. Let's hear about the bad stuff. Yeah, yeah. let's yeah. see all the really nasty, crappy stuff that went on in our cities yeah. because I mean, that's what will make it interesting. Yeah, I think yeah. a lot of people watch a lot of the shows that come out of the United States and they think, "Geez, you know, I wish we had sites, yeah, and we, histories like that." But we I mean, do. We, we do have For that a young history. country. We've got some of the most brutal recorded history out. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah, and that's the thing. Yeah, we we are in a country where you have redbacks on the dunny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry for overseas listen, Let's say toilet, and a redback is a very nasty spider that will kill you. We have animals here that will take you down within a heartbeat. Yep. Yeah, I mean, we may not have grizzly bears, but we got little creepy crawlies that will take you down in about two seconds. We have got the most deadliest snake in the world in Australia. Yeah, I mean, well, what is it? I think out of the snake. top our top ten, I think we've got the. Yeah, like eight, eight out of eight ten. Eight, eight snakes here. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, and you get, I've had spoken a lot of overseas people that say, how can you live in Australia? It's just full of these horrible, nasty critters. Oh, they're nothing, mate. You know, you the lands to, don't get you. The sharks in the water will. Yeah, the sharks will get you. Yeah, I mean, we've had. But so a lot of the places we have here, and this is what that's what the point we're trying to put across. So if there are any producers out there listening to this, instead of looking at this reality stuff in that sense where it's just God knows what it is. But you get some a real good get someone who knows the history or someone like that, and actually get a team together who are 
I don't care if it's members of our different teams. Just something. No. Yeah, we just need something that's got a bit of bite to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just some, someone to think, put their hand up. Not there, someone who's going to run around screaming and carrying on. No, I'm no. not into that, like most haunted was. I'm not into that rubbish. It's, it's more to do with, yeah, like. I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm just, I am gobsmacked some of the time because we have so much out there and we're missing out on so much in Australia when it yeah. comes to our broadcasting and stuff like this. Yep. You know? When we're not, I, I mean, I, I like listening to the local radio channels. Yeah, you know I mean, like the ones that, you know, had a lot of talk back and, uh, well, we have a talk back show, but it's more to do with I rather sit down and listen to a really good story and, and something that has, that has truth it in was it. a, a um investigation show that was on TV um, a while back that was hosted by the guy that hosted The Mole. Not Scream Test. No. Way back in the... When no, was no. That? Oh, That's God, that was shown on... Early 2000s. 2000. Yeah, I think, yeah, really early 2000. And they just put a heap of people into a friggin... It was just like that um, Grant, whatever the, um, his name is, I think he, yeah. he hosted yeah. that one. Yeah. He did The Mole. Yeah. I mean, that was different. That was in the... Um, uh, the immigration place. Of, yeah, they did yeah. the quarantine this station. Quarantine this station the last Sydney. episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the last thing I can remember on TV about paranormal investigation and. Yeah, I mean we that that, and that was twenty odd years ago. I mean, for those shows in the day, they were, they were good. Yeah, yeah, that that was good television. That, that there wasn't the. That there wasn't the, the commercialisation yeah. yeah. that's gone nowadays. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't know, I. I'd love to see us progress because I've had a lot to do with the media industry over the years and for what I've, even when I was consultant on uh, pilots for TV shows and the paranormal overseas, and when I've done, that's fine, I've done all that stuff. But I'd love to see it here. Yep. I, I'd just love to see someone take the ball. I'd, hey, if I had the money, yep, not a problem. I would produce the bloody thing myself. I wouldn't want to be in front of the camera again, but actually... Show some really good stuff in Australia. Yeah. It's got to offer. Yeah. Seriously, and that's basically what I've got to say about that. Is that enough? Uh, I think so. All I right. think I've gotten off my soapbox. Soapbox. Or you I'm going to call this soap. Step down a level. Oh, uh, maybe I've stepped up a level for the <laughs> next segment, <laughs> which is I have no idea. Anything Neither else? Do I. No, except there's a blue moon. Except yeah, okay. If anyone's interested, said there's a blue moon on tomorrow night, you better yeah. And so, don't know what it is. Google it like I did. Yeah, I knew what it was. It's a moon that's blue for about a minute. Because? Because, see, what happens is aliens. Aliens? Aliens took a big dump on it and because and, and their poop's blue. I and green. It reflects. You know an awful lot about alien poop. Do you? No, you do. I said, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I want you telling us, Wadsy. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what has been coming out, though, a lot of information regarding... Um, I thought I was going to talk about poop again. No, not poop again. No, a lot of stuff come around about fucking um, reptilians. Oh, you heard about this? No. Reptilians. You know what reptilians are? Enlighten us, Brad, for those okay. that out there that don't know. Okay, reptilians are supposed to be an alien species that look like us, but every now and then their eyes change, they get the real slit. To them. And you Google reptilian um, aliens, something like that on YouTube, and you see there's this a lot of... like men in black. It is living amongst us. Yeah, living amongst us. And yeah. they reckon that... Where did I read it? They reckon that um, something's happening soon with the reptilians, like they're going to make themselves known or that. But the trouble is, one of my friends on Facebook is UFO Phil too, so... <laughs> which, which is cool. <laughs> I love UFO Phil. He's awesome. He's such a character. But, yeah, it's it's to have that whole whole thing of the reptilians are going to make themselves known. And there's a lot of that information getting around at the moment, so I'm just curious to see what that's about. But we want to hear some from our listeners too. We want to hear your stories. I want to read out your stories as well, your experiences with the paranormal. I will sit yep. down and read it out. Yes. It's not hard. You get on the email list with your paranormal story and let us know about it. Let us know what your experiences were. And, hey, we'll read it out because there might be someone out there that's had the same experience. Yeah. And to shed some light and help them out. What do you think, Liam? Yeah, I think so. Especially anyone who's had similar experiences and you know concerned about it or not sure what to make of it. Yeah, so just there's a lot of people out there that have had this, and you know show that it's happening to a lot more people out there as well. They're not yeah. alone. There's a lot of people out there who've had a certain amount of experiences with the paranormal, and they've had the same experiences. You know, I've had some weird events in my life, 
and because I, I make it known what happened to me, I'm not going to hide the fact. You know, we, we, even if you give us a pseudo name or something like that, you know, you don't have to give us your real name. But if you just want to get it out there, I'd love to hear from someone who's seen the the black lady at Dutton. Oh, not sorry, at South Brisbane the cemetery. cemetery. You know, said Dutton Park Cemetery, oh, didn't you? Nearly. Bad, naughty, naughty boy. The, the cemetery oh, at Dutton Park. Yes, the one, the South Brisbane. Yeah, there. yeah the woman in black. That was very black. interesting, actually. Yeah. I love that story about how she would, she would mourn and look after his grave, her husband's grave, and then when she passed on, she still walked through, and a lot of people have seen her. Yeah. yeah. So, so if you've Daytime seen her... Daytime and nighttime. That's it. She's yeah. scared by the traffic. And it doesn't matter what, because it doesn't matter if it's day or night, a paranormal event will happen around you, whether you like it or not. Yep. Yep. And that's it at the end of the day. So, guys, I think we might call it quits tonight. We've gone for about an hour and a half tonight because I still haven't packed. And where are you going? Where Sydney. Are you I'll be in Sydney this weekend. Why? Because it's awesome. Uh, I will be on the Ghost of Oz. Uh, thank you, guys, for having <laughs> me on. It's so cool. Um, Ghost of Oz, so I'm going to be on their show. I'm also going to check out a cool location while I'm there and investigate that. Um, so, so what's the Ghost of Oz? A TV, radio, my website? Be- if you go to my Facebook page or something like that, go to the fan site, you'll see the Ghost of Oz link. You can also, on Facebook, you can go to Ghost of Oz if you type that in and you will come across their uh, fan site themselves. Yep. Show the love, show support to the other radio show uh, because they do a friggin' awesome job. And there's yep. three of them and they are really good at what they do. And I'm so proud and honoured to be a part of their their final, you know, their, their end of season one show. Yep. So to be asked to be a part of that, I am, I was truly on. Yeah, seriously. I mean, it meant a lot to me. Don't forget to mention us. Who? Oh, what? Sorry? No love. No love. Well, what do you mean love? you got shirts tonight. No, I didn't. You didn't oh, get one you, big enough. No, I couldn't get a double XXX. My broad XXX, shoulders. XXX, XXX, XXX. <laughs> right, everything else is broad. It can't go over your head. We, we, we try to give them an extra large, but you know the part that you put over your head? That wasn't big enough. So happy. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm not wearing a small. I can wear a small. I look... Puny little small. Hey, this comes in man size. Stop it. Small men's, it's called. Um, oh. So, anyway, guys, listen, thank you for spending the time with us on The Naked Zombie. You have to call it all short tonight because, seriously, I've got to pack and I've got so much stuff to do. I haven't even got myself organised with my equipment yet. And in closing, what's he? If it's on the net, it must be true. Liam? Um, yeah, just show your love to everybody. Yep. So all I've got to say, yeah, go around and check out a couple of groups and hit that like button. Yep, and also, so show your support, folks out there. Show your support for your fellow paranormal investigators, your fellow teammates, and, and whatever, whatever they are doing with what they are doing, you know, support them. Get behind them. Because yeah, the zombie, well, the zombie does. It's like Ghost of Oz, radio show. But we support them. Yep, yep. I, I have no problem. I love those guys. I think they're awesome. Anyone's got, like, um, the Paranormal Guide, stuff like that, another radio show, show your support because they put the hard work in as well to bring you guys out there entertainment and fun and, and news and, and everything else. Yeah, and whatever you do in life, you do it for a reason, right? Stop fighting about it and show a bit of compassion, a bit of, yeah. Ditto. Ditto. Cool. You have it? All right, listen, thank you. You've been listening to the Naked Zombie Paranormal Radio Show, Australia's number one paranormal pop culture, because we are paranormal pop culture. Right, it's not normal. No, it's not normal. It's paranormal, normal, normal. (laughs) Anyway, thank you, everyone, and I am your host, Brad Scott, and I'd like to say, like I say each week on the show, or each time we do the show, which is a couple of times a week now, is have a good night, have a safe night, and if you're out investigating, please look after each other. You have been listening to The Naked Zombie. Bye, all. You can say bye to him. Oh, bye. Bye. <laughs>